Hello Electroheads, today we're talking hydrogen. And here's hydrogen. Oh, this lockdown's really starting to take its toll. <laughs> For a very long time now, there have been voices in the automotive industry who claim that hydrogen is the next big thing. That hydrogen vehicles and not battery electric vehicles are the future. So, where are they? Does hydrogen have a future? Are we wasting our time with battery electric vehicles? And how the hell does a hydrogen car work anyway? Tell me. All will be revealed in this video, but first, make sure to like and subscribe and uh, leave a comment down below. You know, watch the video, disagree with me, explain why I'm stupid, the usual malarkey. And also be sure to check out our Patreon page if you're interested in getting access to our videos a little bit early and seeing some sweet extra bonus, bonus extra content. I want more, and I know I shouldn't. Fun fact, did you know that the world's first internal combustion engine vehicle was powered by hydrogen? Nah. It's true, it was constructed in 1807 by a French chap called Francois Isaac de Rivans. It had three wheels, it weighed about a ton, and it had a range of 26 meters. Still better than a G-Wiz. Oh, can you stop laughing at the car? <laughs> <laughs> the idea of powering cars with hydrogen has always been an appealing one. It is, after all, the world's most abundant element. And that's not the only selling point. Very quickly, let me just explain the difference between battery electric vehicles, that's BEVs, and hydrogen fuel cell electric vehicles, or FKEVs, which I've just realised kind of sounds like someone swearing in an Irish accent. <laughs> So battery electric vehicles, they are the ones that we are always banging on about on this channel. They don't have engines or fuel tanks, they have big batteries. You charge those batteries by plugging them into a cable, and when you drive the car, it uses the energy stored in the battery to move itself. Duh. But with a hydrogen vehicle, there is no charging. You fill the car up with a tank of pressurized hydrogen. The car then uses an onboard hydrogen fuel cell to mix that hydrogen with oxygen and via chemical witchcraft, turns it into energy. Speak in a language we can understand, Mr. Scientist. That energy is then used to power a small battery, which in turn is used to drive the wheels. Now, the appeal here is obvious. It's a zero emissions vehicle, just like battery electric vehicles. They do have exhaust pipes, but nothing comes out the back other than good old H2O. In fact, if you see a hydrogen vehicle on the road one day and you're a little bit thirsty, you can just pop your mouth over the exhaust pipe. It's very refreshing. Don't do that. But the beauty of these particular zero emissions vehicles is that they can be filled up almost as quickly as petrol cars can. You just fill up the tank, it takes five minutes. And there's more. Because hydrogen vehicles can be filled up quickly at filling stations, you theoretically wouldn't have to do as much changing of infrastructure if they were to become mainstream. We could simply adapt existing petrol stations instead of having to build zillions and zillions of on-street chargers, which is what we're having to do for BEVs. And plus, hydrogen cars have big range. The new Toyota Mirai, a hydrogen-powered vehicle, has north of 400 miles of range per tank. The only battery electric vehicle in the world currently on sale that can match that is the Tesla Model S. Sounds pretty good, right? So where are they all? Currently, there are three hydrogen-powered vehicles on sale globally. The Hyundai Nexo, the Honda Clarity, and the Toyota Mirai, which astonishingly is entering its third generation and looks really good now. The old one looked like Blade Runner's Prius. And that's it. That is the full selection of hydrogen cars that you can buy right now. And there isn't exactly a huge amount of places to charge them either. Here is a map of all the electric car charge points in the UK. Last year alone, 8,000 new ones were added, and in total, there are more of them than there are petrol stations. Here is a map of everywhere in the UK that you can fill your car up with hydrogen. There are 12 of them. So why are there so few hydrogen filling stations? Well, for one, it's a bit of a chicken egg situation, really, like we had with battery electric vehicles 10 years ago. The scarcity of filling stations is putting people off buying hydrogen vehicles, which is putting car makers off building hydrogen vehicles, which is putting councils off building hydrogen filling stations, which is putting, you get the idea. Councils don't want to build stuff that no one is going to use, and car makers don't want to make cars that you can't fill up anywhere. 
The only way to break this stalemate is for someone to take a leap of faith and spend a lot of money to get the ball rolling. Speaking of large sums of money, while hydrogen filling stations look pretty similar to your average one of the mill petrol pump, they are actually pretty serious pieces of kit. Hydrogen is a highly explosive gas and is pumped into hydrogen cars at 10,000 PSI. That's almost as much pressure as Steve Bruce is under at Newcastle. Anyone? Hey. The point is, hydrogen filling stations are difficult and expensive to install. Ten years ago, the state of California promised 50 new ones and allotted a budget of $2 million for each one. And then there's the process of creating hydrogen fuel, which, despite the fact that it's literally in the air we breathe, is really quite difficult. With EVs, you just make electricity, preferably via renewable sources, and put it in your car. But the process of creating the compressed hydrogen needed to power cars is a lot more long-winded and much more similar to the process of turning oil into petrol. There are a lot of steps involved. It's very energy intensive. It even requires burning fossil fuels. Now, most hydrogen is sourced from natural gas via a process called cracking. It is then compressed and transported to the filling stations and then compressed again into the cars. Yes, science! It's an expensive process and as a result, filling up your hydrogen car is not cheap. To give you some idea, to fill up a Hyundai Nexo in the UK, which has 414 miles of range on a tank, could cost you somewhere between 60 and 95 pounds. Now, but off. Seriously. We're talking petrol prices here. And on top of all of that, hydrogen fuel cells aren't especially efficient. It's estimated that around 60% of the energy created from that chemical reaction actually goes towards powering the car. The rest is wasted. Now, just as our processes of generating electricity are getting cleaner over time, there is no question that if we were to persevere with hydrogen, we would figure out cleaner ways of making it. In fact, there are some very clever people who are already claiming that they figured out how to do it without burning any fossil fuels. But at this point, the question we need to ask ourselves is, is there any point? Given that the battery electric vehicle revolution is already well underway, given that all the world's biggest car makers are now fully focused on battery electric vehicles, is there any need to introduce a second, more complicated variant of electric vehicle into the mix? Well, it really depends who you ask. Toyota is probably the world's biggest advocate for hydrogen electric vehicles, and they insist that they have a place alongside battery electric vehicles in the future. Others are not so confident. At VW's recent battery event, the CEO Herbert Dice essentially ruled out hydrogen tech entirely, saying it was simply too difficult. A pretty damning statement from the CEO of the world's biggest car company. Likewise, Tesla boss and future Skynet CEO Elon Musk has referred to hydrogen in the past as full cells and a big pain in the ass. I just wish he'd stop mincing his words and tell us how he really feels. Tell us how you really okay, feel. You know what? I'll tell you how I really feel. Listen. There is no question that hydrogen fuel cell technology is ingenious and exciting. The idea of arriving at a pump, filling your car up and driving off with a full tank, just like we're used to doing, is incredibly appealing. But personally, I just don't see hydrogen going mainstream anytime soon. The global automotive industry already has its hands full with the transition from ICE to EV, while the world's governments are already busy making a huge meal of rolling out a proper charger network. So the idea of a second, more complex type of electric vehicle being embraced by both car makers and governments alike just seems incredibly far-fetched to me. But more to the point, battery tech is advancing so fast that the advantages of hydrogen vehicles are starting to dwindle. Sure, you can fill a tank up in five minutes, but under the right conditions, you can charge a new Porsche Taycan fully in 20 minutes, using nothing but wind. What on earth are you on about? And charge times are only going to get faster. And the same goes for range. Tesla's incoming Model S Plaid has north of 500 miles of the stuff, and the average range of new electric cars coming out today is just skyrocketing. There's a running joke in the automotive industry, and it goes like this. Hydrogen vehicles are the technology of the future, and they always will be. Sadly, I'm inclined to agree, but not that sadly, because the EVs are great. So there we have it, hydrogen fuel cell vehicles. A lovely idea on paper. Please do get down in the comments and share with me your thoughts on this one. I know there's a lot of you watching this who are probably more clued up than I am on hydrogen tech, and I would love to hear from you. And as always, make sure to like and subscribe, and we'll see you soon.